Okay, so um, this video I'm kind of sneaking in kind of like a huge topic. And so I'm particularly excited about this one. I think this is going to, if you're, if you're kind of following along here, this is going to majorly change the way you might approach uh, building certain kind of quick sketches uh, in JavaScript and in P5. So um, let's take a look at the scenario. Uh, it's like a little tiny, it's in a way it's like a small change I'm going to make to this particular sketch that I'm going to show you in a moment, but it's a major leap forward conceptually in terms of how you think about and build sketches. Now this is certainly, I'm like way too much exposition here, but this almost definitely needs many follow-ups. But let's see how far I get in this video and um, see what happens from there since I'm really just in a room talking to myself. But uh, at some point I will hear from people who are watching this. Okay, so let's look at this example. So this is a variation of the, a bouncing ball sketch that I showed in a previous video. I simplified it a little bit. This is now a bubble. Uh, it ha it's an object, it has just an X and a Y, and then the program is modular, uh, modularized into two functions, a move and a display function. The move function uh, adjusts the X and a Y by the, a random value, and you can see here that it's kind of just like jittering randomly, and then the display function down here just draws the circle. So this is what we've got, a bubble object and a move and a display function. The leap forward that I want to make here is I want the code ultimately to not look like this in draw, but I want it to look like this. Bubble.move, bubble.display. So right now, this bubble is just some data. It's just the x, y location. But I want to think of the bubble as a kind of more than just some data. That bubble is an object that has an x and a y, and it also has functionality. It can know how to display itself. It can know how to move itself. And this will open up a lot of possibilities. For example, eventually we'll see how you might just release like a thousand of these bubble objects onto the screen all at once. So how do we define the function? How do, sorry, how do we define this object so not only does it have a bubble X and a bubble Y, but that this move function is somehow a part of the bubble object. So let's, I'm gonna diagram some syntax here. So, okay, so this is the syntax for the object. Var bubble equals open curly bracket, close curly bracket, X, which is a field or a, 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 a it's really like a variable inside of the bubble object, uh, X colon, I think I, it was 200, comma, y colon 150. And again, an object contain, in JavaScript contains what's known as name value, or sometimes referred to as key value pairs. This is the name x, this is the value 200. And this really behaves just like a variable does. It's kind of like this list of variables that's inside this other variable called bubble. So the secret, magic, wonderful thing about JavaScript is that these don't have to just be values, they can be functions. So what would happen if I said, okay, here, this name value pair is not name and value, it is name and value, but the value is a function. So the name is display and the value is function. So syntax is kind of, well, hopefully when I type this out, it'll, it'll look a little neater than this, but you can see name value, name function. So this looks different, right? Normally we would say, you know, function display like this, but here, uh, just like normally we would say var x, instead of saying var x, it's x colon, instead of saying function display, it's display colon function. Now, <laughs> The sort of unfortunate truth is there's lots of other ways that you can write and define functions in JavaScript, and some of those will come up later as well. But for the moment, now we're seeing one new way. This bubble has an X and a Y and a display function. So what happens? Now we've got to fill in the code here inside for this function. Uh, I want to draw an ellipse. The question is, where do I want to draw that ellipse? I want to draw it at this x and this y. <laughs> I kind of did that by accident, but I realized I'm sort of doing it on purpose. So the we this is the one of the weirdest things it's going to take some time to get used to, and hopefully some follow-up videos I make will clarify this new term. Uh, I'm, I'm like having uh, this like thing going on in my brain because I'm saying this new term, and the term is actually this, like the word this. That's what I'm getting to. So in order to refer back to this x and this y, you can't say x and y here. 
these x and y, if there were an x and y here, it would, be, it would be looking for some global variable somewhere. You need to, in order to refer to the specific x that's part of this object, this is a key word that refers to this particular bubble. So this dot x comma this dot y. And this is like one of the biggest uh, gotchas, so to speak, in JavaScript. It's so easy to forget. And then you might have like 20 comma 20. So it might be so easy to forget this kind of thing. So now that you've said this, bubble with an x and a y and a display function which does this, draws this ellipse at this x and this y, then we can start to write things like bubble dot display. When you execute bubble dot display, it's going to look up this function, execute this code, and look for the, what these values are here in these particular variables. Okay, so let's try to make that happen here. <laughs> Hopefully I got this right. So now I'm going to say a display function and actually, I could just go and grab exactly this code that we had here. And I'm going to delete this and bring it up here. And the difference now, of course, is that here I have an x, which is 300, a y, which is 200, display, which is a function which does all of this, right? I'm inside the object. So there's no reason for me to refer to the object's variable name. All I can just say this, this particular object that I'm inside right now. Then the next name value pair, comma, move, which is also a function. And I'm going to grab this code. And again, this dot x, this dot y, this dot x, this dot y. So now we see this entire object here, the bubble object. This is, this is like, now we have this thing, this, it's, it's, not, it's like this collection of stuff. It's data, I could add colors to it, I could add size to it, I could add other functions to it. I have this uh, bubble, fun bubble object has both data and functionality. So now here in draw, I can say things like bubble.move and bubble.display. Now I wonder why display is syntax highlighted there. It's not part of P5, it must be, display must be some other keyword in JavaScript. So I wonder if that's a little bit dangerous for me to use it, but I think it'll be okay. So let's run this program. We have exactly the same program. It works just fine. Um, and also, uh, uh, this might also be, uh, actually, no, I'm not going to do this now because I'm not sure how the v5.js editor works. So anyway, I, you know, I've actually never, like, this is like the first time I tried doing this object stuff in JavaScript in this way, at least explaining it. So I'm not sure how that was. But this is just the first, first step. And so, you know, if you had to have a second one of these, you'd, still, you'd have to essentially duplicate all of this code. Um, so that might be something that you try right now, actually. Try uh, making an object like this, like this particular one, this bubble. Maybe you know, copy this code and add a color to it. Um, add another function to it, maybe a function that do something if it like reaches the edge of the screen or something, although with this randomness it might take a while. So see what else you can add to it. See if you can make one program that has two objects in it. And then at some point I'm going to make a video that's going to look at something called an array, which allows you to have a list of variables. And one thing that you can do very conveniently with arrays is have a list of objects. And there's, more, there's a lot more to get to in terms of how these objects are made and stored, but I'm rambling now. So hopefully this helps a little bit and let me know what you think, and I'm going to hit stop now. I'm really hitting stop. This was actually a short video for such a big topic.